All right, before we actually gonna go into the code, we need to make a very important step and get you an AI assistant. And this is a game changer for both beginners and even seasoned developers. In general, it will help you code faster, provide you code suggestions, where you would normally have to look up the documentation or do some tricky math. And it's also good with little tasks like refactoring, writing documentation, and so on. But don't expect it to be perfect or do all the job for you. As you already know, AI tends to hallucinate or just not give you the best answers, especially if you're going to ask it poorly. So use it as a tool and not your replacement. But you will figure it out yourself what it's really good for and where it helps you the most. But now probably you wonder, which AI assistance should you get? And it's really a hard question actually, because there are so many of them. Probably you've even heard about some of them, like GitHub Copilot, Tab9, Cursor AI, Codium, Kodi, Devin, there is Amazon Whisper, Continue AI, and there are so many of them that it's really hard to choose one. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter which one you get, but you should definitely get at least something. And personally, I don't really want to give you a specific AI assistant name just yet, but I want to explain you the certain things more than the others, and that might also influence which things more than the others, and that might also influence which AI assistant you're gonna choose. So there are a few key points to consider, and if you don't want to listen to me go through all these points, you can skip ahead of this video where I'm gonna show you installation example and how to get one right now. Otherwise, here are the five points to consider in choosing the right AI assistant. I'm gonna start with the first one, and it's great if your AI assistant can be flexible with LLM models. Personally, I don't like being fixed to a single LLM from one company, like OpenAI for example. I like to have the choice of LLM from different companies. Like maybe I want to try the cloud from Anthropic, maybe I want to try ChatGPT from OpenAI and so on, right? It opens you choices and you can test and see what works better for you. And you might also have completely different view on that and that's totally fine. It's also fine if your AI assistant can only handle one LLM. You will be fine with that, but for me, I like to experiment and see what works best. Secondly, keep in mind that all of these AI assistants, they come with a free tier. And it's either very limited, so you hit the wall very fast, or it's just not good at all, right? Because they use much dumber models to offer you this free for life offer, which is great for marketing, not so practical in the real world. Overall, free tier will make you hate your AI assistant until you upgrade. So instead, I recommend you to either use the free trials from different companies, and you can even jump between them until you find something worth paying for. And then I think you should definitely get the paid subscription because you will definitely want to use the latest and greatest AI assistants to code faster and smarter. And in general, they cost somewhere between like $9 and $20 a month, which is not a big deal, right? Thirdly, and it's definitely optional, but we are all coding in a very niche topic like Revit API. So it would be great if your AI assistant can analyze your whole project where you work in because it will help it understand better what you do and just the context about how to give you better suggestions. So I think nowadays pretty much all of them have this feature to be kind of, what is it, uh, code base aware, but it's still worth checking if AI assistant that you chose have this feature because it can be really helpful to see all the files at once. Then the next point, you might also be interested in privacy or security. So you might also look into that. Personally, I'm not really concerned about this point because I think it's generally safe to use and I'm not coding the next unicorn startup, so I'm totally fine with that. But if you work in a large company, you might actually ask your IT department for an advice and see if that might be an issue. And lastly, the fifth point is that if you have a high-end PC that you're working on, you might also consider to run AI models locally. I won't go into too much detail how to make it, but you can use Olama and Continue AI to make it happen inside VS Code or PyCharm. There are plenty of tutorials on that, so you can search for it on YouTube, all right? And also, if you want to run it locally, but you don't know if your PC can handle it, here's the general idea. Your graphical card in your computer has internal memory called VRAM. And you can check how much gigabytes you have if you go to Task Manager, under Performance, you can choose your main GPU, and then you will see it. In my case, I have 4090, so it has 24 gigabytes of memory. Then, you can go to the Olama website and look at all available open source models. Right, right here you can click on models and in here you find a lot of different models you can use because they are all open source. Right now DeepSeek has made a lot of noise so let's use this one as an example. Usually you can see here there are different sizes of the model available and you will see that all of them have this B in the end which refers to how many billions of parameters it was trained with. And also if you're gonna click right here you can see all of these models and on the right how much space do you actually need to run them. 
And what you want to do is that you want to make sure that all this space can actually fit on your graphics memory card. So if I'm going to open my task manager once more, go to performance, select my GPU right here, you'll see that I have 24 gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory. So you need to make sure that the model that you choose can fit on your graphics card. Then it's going to provide you the best performance possible. And obviously, the less parameters you have, the faster it will execute. The more parameters you take, the longer it takes to execute. And don't try to hit like 100% of what your VRAM is. In my case, I have 24 gigabytes. So this one with 20 gigabytes might be the maximum that I would even try to run. But ideally, maybe even lower ones better to run. Hi there, sorry for the interruption. I just want to let you know that this whole lesson that you're watching right now is from my latest Pirate Hackers basic course, which focuses on absolute beginners to programming. And it teaches necessary basics of Pyravid, Python, and Revit API. You can click the link in the description if you want to learn more about the course and how it can help you start coding inside of Revit. And now, back to the video. And here are the five things to consider in choosing an AI assistance for coding. Firstly, make sure that it's flexible with choosing different LLM models. That can be really useful. Secondly, you want to avoid free tier at all costs. Either use the paid tier or just jump between the trial versions from different companies. Thirdly, check if AI Assistant is a code base aware so it can see all your files in your project and it can make decisions based on that as well. Fourthly, it might be important to many of you, the security and privacy, so you might look into that as well. And lastly, you might also consider to run it locally. Then you're going to use different tools, different models, but it might work out in the end if your PC is powerful enough. All right, and now let's go and install one of these AI assistants together. But pretty much all of them follow the same simple installation process. And I don't really want to recommend any of these AI assistants just yet, but let's go with tab 9 for this lesson. Because that's what I'm testing right now, and in general, I'm pretty happy with the results I get. I'm not affiliated, so I don't really care which one you choose. You can choose anything you want. But in my case, I'm just going to go to tab 9 website, and we're going to kind of create an account. Another popular choice is also GitHub Copilot. And this is probably the most used one because it comes from GitHub, it has the Microsoft backing, but many people also complain how it works. This is also fine, but I don't think you can choose the models that you use. So in my case, I'm going to go with tab 9. You can scroll through, see all the benefits it offers you, you can see private, personal, protected, whatever. You just want to find a button, get started for free. And here you can check the pricing, might, might also be important to first check the pricing, so you don't choose the most expensive ones. $9 is quite okay, I think. And again, and also don't really go with the basic free tier because it's going to provide you really dumber models. So I highly recommend you to go with the paid one or use the trial. So I'm going to click here on get started. Then you need an account. I'm going to click on GitHub right here. It's going to ask, are you fine with sharing your data with this one? And that's okay. And then you're going to come right here. So I'm going to select the monthly and you can see bill today is zero. So I just need to fill in my details. All right, now, when you're going to be finished with the payment details, you're finally going to activate the trial and it's going to go inside. It's pretty much irrelevant because now we need to download the plugin for your code editor. So let's open PyCharm. Now, you'd want to click right here, go to settings, then look here for the plugins. And then you need to search for the plugin that you downloaded. In this case, I downloaded tab 9. And somewhere here, you can see tab 9 AI chat autocomplete. Just enable it. If you decided to go with Copilot, you're also going to find here GitHub Copilot. If you decided, I don't know, uh, Continue AI, it's also going to be somewhere here. You can see right there is Continue. And pretty much all of them have these plugins and it's very easy to install. Some of them work better than others, also in PyCharm and Visual Studio Code. But in general, you just download the plugin. All right, once you're going to download it and install, you'll notice right here you'll see a new symbol. You might need to restart your PyCharm as well. But in general, you'll see that here is a new icon for your AI assistant. This one right here is the default PyCharm kind of assistant and I haven't heard anyone say anything good about this. So just ignore it's not here. We're going to focus on this one. So we can click on that one and we're going to open it up. In here, when you're going to just install it, it will ask you to log in into your account. I will try to log out from mine if I can. Let me just have a look. All right, so I managed to sign it out. So this is the message you're supposed to see. Welcome to tab nine. Consider a 13 day preview of tab nine starts upon installation. You don't even need an account apparently. Once you're going to install this plugin, you will start using it as normal, I guess. But I already have an account, so I'm going to click here, login. All right, once I clicked on login, I can see this message right here. All set, you can close this tab and go back to your ID. I click here and now I'm inside. So in here, what's great is that right here on the top, I can click and I can select different kind of LLM models. 
They're not all of them and not so many of them, but at least I can choose between Anthropic, OpenAI, and also their own train with the Mistral. It's not bad to have at least some choice of LLM models. That's great. Now, let's stay with the, I don't know, Cloud maybe. All right, and now, how does it work? In here on the site, you will have this chat where you will always be able to talk to it. For example, I can write here something, create me a function that will create a new wall in Revit API project with PyRevit. Uh, make sure I can provide coordinates and it uses default wall type. All right, let's just try it. I'm going to paste it here and it's going to start thinking. So this is just a chat like you would normally chat with ChatGPT and all other other ones. Here we can see, okay, we have doc, start point, end point, which makes sense then different code and that's fine, right? And here you will see, you can see apply, inserted cursor, copy, new file, for example, Let's say I had some code before and after, now I wanna paste, add my cursor. Now it goes in here and so on. You'll also notice there are some buttons like edit, explain, test, I'm gonna click on explain. It's also aware of your code base, so it will be able to see, okay, this is the function, here's what's going on inside. So you can go back and forth in between. I'm not gonna go deep in how it works. In general, there are some commands. For example, here I can also mention different files. Let's say I have here, a project open from my Python course. So let's say there is like, I don't know, custom functions. Uh, explain what's going on in that file. It can also look inside other files, tell you what's going on. You can see the file is an educational resource that demonstrates various aspects of function and blah, 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 right? It's irrelevant right now, but just know about this. And in general, another big feature when you're going to start using them is when you will be just coding here, for example, items is going to be a list, it will be giving you these suggestions and you can accept them by clicking the tab key. Honestly, tab key is really horrible in my opinion because I constantly use tab to move it to the right and to the left. So the first thing I like to do with any AI assistant is to change how I accept these suggestions. Now let's write here something like create me a function to rename files in the given path by adding today's date. And you can see normally when you're going to create different comments describing what you're about to write or what do you need to write, it will also give you the suggestions. For example, here is the function define rename files, path, prefix, imports. It's a very simple function, but you know, this one, this is where it's really good to have an AI assistant. I know that many of you can do this manually without any issues and without referencing documentation, but it's still much faster to just accept it and then change some things. For example, ooh, instead of that one, I actually wanted to have, I don't know, this way, right? Format, there was something today and prefix. So it's really great that you can get really quick answers to your questions or just help you write faster. Now, as I said, I don't like accepting with a tab. So the thing I do in PyCharm, I click here, go to settings. Then you have to go to the key map. This is where you can change different uh, key bindings. And you want to select here plugins. Then find the plugin that you decided to use. In my case, it should be something like tab nine. I don't see it here. Tab nine AI chat. Open it and here you will be able to set custom key binds to different functions. For example, here is the accept completion. And I set it to the key under the escape above the tab. I find it much more convenient to use another key. Because then sometimes when you will be right define function, then somewhere here you would want to move it here, but instead you accept it, right? Depending on what you do, that's not good. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. In general, you just need to start testing it and you will see where it's useful. Try different models, maybe go with code trial, maybe choose 4.0, or you can see I have more models to choose from now. But in general, you will figure it out as you start using this AI assistant. And again, you don't have to get the tab nine, you can get any other one. Personally, I don't care which one you get, just choose something that you enjoy. Oh, and also, if you're gonna be using Visual Studio Code, it's gonna be exactly the same installation process. You're gonna open it, go to extensions, and then look for, for example, Tab9 in this case, or GitHub Copilot, right? You're gonna find it, you're gonna install it, you're gonna log in, and it's gonna work right away. There's also gonna be a button somewhere. I don't really use Visual Studio Code that much. I prefer to stay in PyCharm. But that's pretty much it. Just install any of AI assistants, and I don't care which one you get, but make sure you get at least something. And then test and see how it helps you. Especially if you're just starting out, it's gonna be such a tremendous help in your programming journey. Because oftentimes you will not know about different packages, you might not know how to do certain simple things like different algorithms. And if you're gonna write with the comment, hey, I wanna get all files in this path and I'm gonna add the date in the end. How do I do this? And it's just gonna quickly give you, hey, 
here's the answer, accept. You can also select some code, ask what's going on and so on. So I definitely recommend you that you need to get an AI assistant. All right, and now once you're gonna be done with this step, you're ready to go to the next lesson where we're gonna talk about Revit API documentation, which is a really, really important step in your programming journey. So I'm gonna wish you happy coding and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Goodbye.